I love that concept of common objects made uncommonly well. And that whole concept is, applies from my perspective with, with making work. Like there's no division between, even though some things might be perceived as a more decorative piece, as far as I'm concerned when I'm making each piece, whether it's a, a cup or it's a large jar or a platter, it's all made uh, with the best aesthetic intentions. And there's no division between, oh, this is functional and that's decorative. And that actually really, so even though there's sculpt, you know, more decorative sculptural piece, pieces around, like the pillow forms and things like that, I don't make that division at all. And I think there's no, I would much rather see a beautiful functional work in the gallery than perhaps an unresolved sculptural piece. Well, I've been away for that long stint and I got back in 84 yeah. and uh, really came back to set up a big project. Yeah. So I'd done, I'd built kilns, I'd worked in a lot of places, building kilns. So I came back and um, was looking for land where I could do that. I wasn't going to do it on a rented property. It was going to take me a year to build the kilns. So you know, it had to be on my own property. So of course, I wanted to be close to wood. I was tempted to move up to that southern coast of New South Wales, which I love, I still love that area. But the logistics at that stage, 10,000 bricks on the front nature strip, and mum and dad prepared to give a hand, because you know, I'd been away for years. And it's funny, when you've been away five years, it's like you're re-migrating home, so I'd lost track with a lot of old lot of friends. refusing to give up. I don't, if it's something you want to do, you don't usually need discipline to do something you want to do. You only need discipline for things that you don't like doing. So if you like, if you like making what you're making, it's not really a problem.